the true story, Court of Human Relations, conducted by A.L. Alexander. Mr. A.L. Alexander's voice, bearing comfort and encouragement, is known to millions of radio listeners all over the United States. His sincere and wholehearted concern with the problems they have brought him has won him national renown. A word now from Mr. Alexander. I have always felt that in this troubled world, the great influence of radio, conquering as it does time and space, and with almost unlimited opportunity for service, can constitute more than just polite diversion, a show, but be of ever-increasing value as a source of social meaning and importance. As we look at the world about us, especially in view of the trying conditions of the past few years, we cannot help but realize how desperately human beings need the sympathy of common experience and common understanding. Well, it's one of the sad conditions of life that no man will really learn from the experiences of another. To fully understand, he must experience suffering himself. There is always the hope that the actions responsible for the misadventures of others may chance to divert some otherwise earnest soul from years or even a lifetime of regret. Just as True Story magazine is dedicated to the fascinating reality that goes to make up the picture of real life, so does this broadcast deal in those plain and simple truths which help us to better understand the follies and the sorrows of those about us. I feel that such knowledge is in the interest of a better, safer, happier world in which to live. In the January True Story magazine, now on sale at more than 100,000 magazine stands the country over, you will find the real-life experience which is dramatized in the Court of Human Relations tonight. Listen to the problem as it is presented here. Consider the opinions of Mr. Alexander and the jury. Then buy a copy of True Story. Read this story, For Love of Me, on page 36, and write us a letter telling us what you think is the best solution to this young woman's problem. And now, in beginning our dramatization... We present Mr. Alexander as he listens sympathetically to the young woman who has come to the True Story Court. I don't know what I'm going to do, Mr. Alexander. They're waiting now to take him away. A year and a half. Can they do that? Can they take him? Oh, won't you please try to calm yourself? <laughs> if this is to do any good, you must control yourself so we can know what this is all about. Now, very briefly, let's go back to the beginning. According to my notes here, you are now 18 years of age. Yes. You were born in New York City. Yes, on the east side. Of immigrant parents. Yes. As we understand it, a year ago you were working your way through college. Yes, I attended day classes. And at night you were a switchboard operator for the telephone company. Now then, from this point on, Miss... Stinkovich. Will you kindly give us the circumstances leading up to your present problem? Yes, sir. One night I was leaving the exchange where I worked, when just as I was going out of the building, I met Alice Turney, another girl who worked at the exchange, and two boys in sailors' room. Lucy. Hello, Alice. Did you leave the office early? Certainly not. It's after 11. Oh, for Pete's sake. What's the matter with you, sailors? You said it was only a quarter to. Don't you have to know what time it is in the Navy? Oh, we tell time by bells. This watch business gets us all mixed up. Well, it's your own fault, then. Guess Reggie's left, hasn't she, Lucy? Mm, about five minutes ago. She left before I did. Okay. I don't believe you've met my boyfriend, have you? This is Al, Lucy. How do you do? Oh, uh, Lucy. This is Dick Ryland. Uh, hello, Lucy. We thought we could get Reggie to go with Dick tonight. We're going uptown to the poppy and dance. Well, if you want my opinion, I'm glad we didn't know what time it was. Oh, yeah? I told you I never liked the name Reggie. Me, I've always been uh, rather partial to Lucy. How about it, Lucy? How's for going with me? Sure, Lucy, you can go. No, no, really, I, I've got to get home and study. I uh, study? A big girl like you going to school? Not kindergarten. College. <laughs> College? Yep. Oh, well, uh, you come out with the Navy tonight, and you'll learn things college has never even heard about. How's about it? No, really, thanks, but I... Ah, come on, Lucy. If you don't like the classes, I'll take you home, honest. I'll give you a lecture on the Panama Canal, on Honolulu, the Philippines, and all points east and west. <laughs> come on, what do you say? Well, I... Oh, come on, Lucy. All right, then. Thanks. Hooray! 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 But you said you didn't dance. Well, I never have very much, honestly. Uh, no, a little practice, you and I, we'd be the best team in the world. Well, this is where I live, Dick. 
I'll say good night out here. Oh. Well, can I go inside and say good night to you in the hall? I'd rather not. Why? Because inside it smells like onions and burned fat and disinfectant. Oh, I see. This is what's known as a tenement. They aren't very pretty. Well, it doesn't look exactly like Kansas, but... Is that the only reason you want to say good night out here on the stoop? It's really awfully late, Dick. I've had such a good time. Thank you ever so much. And just like that, you want to send me away? Why not? You'll have forgotten all about me long before your ship sails in the morning. I'm afraid you got me wrong, Lucy. I know you're not the kind of a girl that'll let a guy neck her and pet her, but you're still the nicest girl I've ever known. You're nice yourself, Dick. I'm going to try to convince you I could be. Good night, Dick. No, honest, Lucy. Wait a minute. This can't end like this. This is only the beginning. You let me write to you, won't you? If you want to. I'm not going away forever, only for three months. And it's going to be the longest three months I've ever known. But I'm coming back, Lucy, and while I'm away, I want to write to you. And I won't be telling you about Kansas either or the farm. Lucy. That kiss wasn't necking, Lucy. You know it, don't you? Don't you? Did I, did I scratch your eyes out? Lucy, let me hold no, you. No, no more. Good night, Dick. Mama's upstairs worried to death wondering where I am. Good night. Good night. You'll get my letters. If I do, I'll answer them. Good night, Dick. Will you please call information? Number, please. Now that the class has brought up the question of the Civil War, may I ask in what year it was? The secession was first suggested or proposed. Mr. Stankovich, will you tell us when it was? It was two months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Professor, I didn't quite understand the question. Please, Mom, don't tell me I'm dreaming. But you don't eat your breakfast, Lucinka. But I've eaten all I want. I've got to go to school now. Goodbye, Something Mom. is funny with you, Lucinka. You're not the girl you used to be. It's those letters, no? Oh, you imagine what you like, Mom. I've got to go to school and learn realities. Bye. Lucy. Oh, Dick. Gosh, you've been waiting out here an hour almost. But I was going to meet you at Penn Station. You know, the three o'clock train, like you asked me to. I got away from Baltimore earlier than I thought I could. Gosh, you must have left in the middle of the night. Oh, almost, but that's not important. Going to play hooky today? Sure. It'll be the first cuts I've taken. And we'll take the boat trip around the island like I asked you in the letter and, and go to Radio City and have dinner up at one of those German restaurants on 86th Street and then go for a walk along Riverside Drive. Sure, Dick. Anything you want. Ah, be careful how you say anything. I'll be kissing you right out here in broad daylight. <laughs> then almost anything. Okay. Ah, gosh, it's been a long three months. Was it only three months? Ah, Lucy, a million years. Where do we go to get that boat? Well, the subway's right up that way. Come on, I'll show you. We are now entering the Harlem River, ladies and gentlemen. And later, from the Harlem, we go to the Hudson. Well, I, I knew there was a river sticks down in hell somewhere, but I never heard of there being rivers in heaven before, did you? Well, there must be if the man says so, mustn't it? Oh, Lucy. Schnitzel, schnitzel, schnitzel. Uh, oh, your German accent is terrible, Mr. Violin. Yeah. Well, how do you like my Kansas accent? Oh, it's swell. You know, Lucy, I don't know why people live in this city. I'm not sure I do either. Except if they're lucky here, they can make a lot of money. Well, I wasn't thinking about that. People can't be alone here. There's nobody out here now but that old man over on the next bench. 
Yeah, I know. He looks like he's asleep. How many bills is it now, Dick? About a million. A million? Well, that's how many are ringing in my heart, Lucy. This afternoon when we were out on that sightseeing boat and I asked you if you loved me and you said yes. Well, have you ever been in love before? No. Have you? Not like this, I haven't. Well, there have been other girls, sure, but it was never like this. Do you really love me, Lucy? Honest to goodness, love. Yes, Dick. Oh, Lucy. Will you marry me when I get out of the Navy? When, whenever you want me to. Oh, why'd I enlist anyhow? If you hadn't, I never would have met you. Yeah, yeah, that's right, too. There won't be any other guys. Will there, Lucy? Oh, how will it be when I feel like this about you? That's just it. You're such a kid. I'm older than you. Love isn't the same thing to you that it is to me. You don't know yet how how it sets you on fire. I do know. I understand. Oh, but I mean, it's it's not the same thing with girls. I don't know about other girls, but I know about me, Dick. Lucy... Oh, why do we have to wait till my enlistment's up? Marry me in the morning, will you, Lucy? I want to. Then why not? Well, they're my parents, Dick. You don't know them. They're foreigners, and they wouldn't approve. Then there's my college, and... Well, there's me, too, isn't there? We could get married and keep it secret until I'm out. Lucy, please, I can't... I can't go away from you like this. We, we could keep it secret. Honest, we could. What do you say, Lucy? All right. Oh, sweetheart... City Hall. And your parents, didn't they find out about it? No, sir. Nobody did. I told Mama I was staying with a girlfriend, and, and Dick and I had our honeymoon at an inexpensive hotel until Dick had to go back to his ship the next morning. Oh, it was terrible living at home after that, Mr. Alexander. I, I didn't want to go out with anybody else. Well, my dear, let's get on with your story. Now, how long was it before you saw your husband again? Uh, it, it was about two months. I was leaving the house one morning to go to school. Lucy. Dick. Sweetheart. Dick, where did you come from? Oh, what difference does that make? Oh, oh no, you, you mustn't kiss me out here. Somebody will see. Well, let's go somewhere where they won't see. Back to that same hotel. Yes, Dick. Yes, but... Where's your uniform? How did you get away? Well, can I tell you at the hotel? You can play hooky again, can't you? Sure, Dick. Oh, I am happy to see you, darling. And let's go. I, I know where the subway is now. how we have to get the same room, isn't it? It's the same room, but it isn't the same somehow. Dick, tell me how you happened to get away. In your letter, you said that they wouldn't give you your discharge. Well, I got it. But how? I lied to him. I, I told him I, I was needed at home to support my mother. But don't you have to prove a thing like that? You can't just say it, can you? Don't they check up on you? Oh, Dick, please stop walking up and down. I told him I'd been married. But you said... Oh, that... what's the use of lying to you, Lucy? I went over the hill. I just couldn't stand it anymore. You, you what, Dick? Went over the hill, jumped ship, deserted. Oh, Dick, they'll put you in prison. You can't. I'm going to take you back. Why, they'll never find us. We can run away. We'll change our name, start over. Can't you see, Lucy? It's impossible for us to go on living this way. I'm going crazy. If I have to stay away from you and go out to sea for months, I, I go out of my mind. But, darling, oh, you don't know what you're saying. You can't desert. Oh, why not? The Navy doesn't look for deserters anymore. If you're turned in, sure, they'll go after you, but they don't search for you. They'll send somebody out to see Mom, that's all. But think, Dick, why, you'll never be able to go home to your folks again. You'll always be a fugitive, always hunted. I won't let you. You don't want to live with me? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Because I... No, no, you, you can't. You've got to go back. All right, then. All right, only... Well, it won't be any worse going back nine days from now than it'll be going back today. I'll, I'll get a summary court-martial either way. You mean you... Sure, they're going to punish me if I go back. Got nine days before I'm a deserter. Then you could... Sure. So why can't you take a week off from work and... Well, let's just be... Mr. and Mrs. 
All right. They've transferred me over to Coney Island for a week, Mom, so uh, I'll find me a room in a boarding house over there. Oh, it's 8 o'clock, darling. Time to get up. Darling. Now, what's the matter? <laughs> Lucy. Thank God. Sweetheart. I've been afraid this was it. Oh. <laughs> afraid? Oh, now, what's there to be afraid about? Oh, Lucy. This morning, you're going somewhere and see a doctor. Now, I'm your husband, and that means I'm boss. Dick. And the boss's orders are these. Oh, I could go to a free clinic. Oh, no, I'm taking care of the rival of my boy. I'm young and I'm strong and I'm not afraid of work. <laughs> we'll go somewhere and we'll take a new name. How's this? Landry. That's almost my name. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Landry. But you've and, got to go back. And not get any pay for months, and pretty soon you'll have to quit work? No, no. Now, where do we go? Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati? We'll go down to the bus terminal and take the first bus that leaves. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> Stop crying. Next bus leaves in ten minutes for Newark. Well, that's the next one. Newark, all right. All right. We save a lot of money, Dick. It doesn't cost much to get there. I see you have uh, furnished rooms for rent. Yes, sir, I have. How much do you want to pay? Well, not very much. We like a kitchenette if we could have it. Well, all right. I've got one for five dollars a week, and well, it's a very nice one. Okay, prove it. All right, come right this way, then. Tell you I'll get a job yet, darling. But our funds are down to four dollars, Dick. Will you let me do the worrying about the funds? Mrs. Landry, look at me. I've got a job, an elevator operator at eighteen dollars a week. Eighteen dollars. Well, what do you expect when you haven't any references? Listen, we can live on it, and we can bring Dick Jr. into the world on it. I'll show you. I wish it wouldn't be so gloomy. Yeah, I know. I don't mean to be. I guess I'm worrying about you. Oh, you mean... You're afraid they'll find you, isn't that it? I'm worried about you, I said. Oh, but the doctors tell me I'm all right. After he's born, Dick, then maybe I can get word to mother somehow. Yeah. Dick, what is it? Well, I guess I'm worried about my mother. Because she's worried about me. Probably been to see her. But you said you couldn't write to her and tell her. I know. They traced the postmark. Well, then go to New York and mail the letter from there. You can't afford to throw 40 cents away. Oh, but darling, if it'll make you feel better, I... All right. I'll stop being grouchy. Maybe I will. Right, shall we go out for a walk? All right. I'll get my things. Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. Ree. Well, you must have just come in. Yes, I did. Well, I was up here three or four times earlier. Oh, I've been out sitting in the park. Well, now, that was nice. Um, I was just wondering, Mrs. Landry, if you owed a bill on something you were buying. Owed a bill? Of course not. Well, now, I just thought that if you did and you figured on moving before you paid what it... What do you mean, you... Mrs. Reed? Well, only that there was a man here today who wanted to know if Mr. and Mrs. Richard Landry were living here. Oh. Well, I said there was, and he said he'd be back later. I see. Well, it... It was probably some friend of ours. Yes, Mrs. Landry. Well, sorry to have troubled you. Who could it have been, Dick? Dick, you, you think it was... Yeah. Oh, Dick. All right, I know it was. Like a crazy fool, I wrote to Mom and told her not to worry. You mailed a letter from New York, didn't you? Well, I didn't want to spend the 40 cents, Lucy. I mailed it from here. Oh, Dick. Well, now we've got to leave. We can't stay here. They'll find me. <laughs> Oh, well, can we stay here? No, no, I'll go, but, but right now I... Oh, Our attention is now directed to A.L. Alexander. Mr. Alexander speaks to the jury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is plain that we have here a most extraordinary human conflict. 
a problem that involves some of the deepest and truest emotions that men can know. On the one side is the call of solemn duty. On the other is the loyalty and affection of a man for his wife and baby. Now that we may better understand what is involved here, I ask this question of Mrs. Ryland. Mrs. Ryland, originally you said it was your wish that your husband satisfy his obligation to the Navy. Are you sure that you have changed your mind even though you realize that he will be disobeying the law? Yes. He must stay. He must stay. There's the baby, and I I can't face this ordeal without him. Mr. Ryland, are you determined to stay by your wife's side regardless of the consequences? Well, Mr. Alexander, I felt that way all the time. I see the way Lucy is. I'd rather die and leave her. We can, of course, appreciate the way you feel. But I'm sure that you will both decide to do the thing that is in your best interest. Now, in the meantime, won't you sit down and try to compose yourselves? Members of the jury, you have heard the dramatization of this case, and it is plain that you have a question here that will challenge your most careful thought. Should this man obey the law of duty or the law of family devotion? Will you kindly identify yourself, sir? My name is Louis I. Pendrock. Your occupation? I am a shop foreman. Mr. Pendrock, will you give us your address, please? I'm most anxious to indicate to our listeners that this jury is composed of people from the studio audience. I live at 1187 Anderson Avenue, Bronx, New York. And will you give us your opinion, sir? I haven't made up my mind. I'd like to hear the others first. All right, Mr. Pendrock. I'll call on you later. Now, this lady, have you an opinion? Yes. I think that Forgive this, me uh... for interrupting, but will you kindly state your name and address? Margaret Hart, 3951 46th Street, Sunnyside, Long Island. Go on, Miss Hart. As long as he's deserted anyway, he should make use of his desertion and not return to the Navy until she's had the child. Well, don't you imagine the sooner he gets back, the better? I don't think it would make much difference, whether he goes back now or six months later. He'll have to take his punishment anyhow. Well, is there anyone present who has an opposite point of view? Do you want me to give my name, Mr. Alexander? By all means. William J. Corcoran, 2010, Mapes Avenue, New York City. Go ahead, Mr. Corcoran. Both of these people knew what they were in for from the beginning. In my opinion, a deserter is a coward. And if she were a real woman, she would not let him stay with her. But what woman would want to be separated from her husband during such a strain as she's going through? That's what I say. It's all right to sound noble, but your own flesh and blood comes first. Well, now I've deliberately selected as one of the members of this jury a sailor, an enlisted man of the United States Navy, so that we might have the point of view of a man actually in the service. Will you give us your name and other identification, if you will? My name is L.J. Wagner. My ship, the USS Dahlgren, the destroyer. Where is your ship, Wagner? At present, at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Well, now, how do you look upon this? I can only say that when you enlist in the Navy, it's for better or for worse. The rule is to stay with the ship until it goes down. Well, now, uh, haven't you ever violated any of the rules? Well, <laughs> once in a while... Nobody ever accused me of being an angel. <laughs> well, do you think it's right for a husband to desert the ship of marriage when it's in trouble? Listen, buddy. The Navy comes first. That's my motto. Well, now, maybe uh, you think the Admiral is listening in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, go brave. Always have ears for everything. All right, now. <laughs> Mr. Pendrock, perhaps you've found an opinion by this time that you'd care to express. I've come to the conclusion, Mr. Alexander, that if Uncle Sam had this problem presented to him, he would give this couple a break. Well, I'm sure that we all have the same affectionate feeling for Uncle Sam and for his patience and understanding. But you must realize that so far as the military and naval forces are concerned, if exceptions were made, if soldiers and sailors took control, why, for one reason or another, men would be leaving their posts every 24 hours. But there's a practical problem here that seems to have been entirely overlooked. Now, suppose they do escape for a while. Do you think that that's going to be the end? Aren't they going to be caught up with? And then won't things be far worse? Members of the jury, will you give me your opinions on that? Well, that's why I suggested that he ought to go back as soon as his wife has had the baby. Oh, I think the whole thing is just a lot of red tape where a mother and a baby are concerned. Gee, Mr. Alexander, I'll get in trouble if I stay here. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about that. You're not responsible for someone else's opinion. Oh, I want to go on record as saying I want him to return. I think they are fooling around with a very dangerous thing. There's no telling what would happen to him or his life if he resists the authorities. Do you think she ought to risk his life? Why should they risk their future happiness? Oh, but she's upset and hysterical right now. 
You can't make up your mind when you're in that frame of mind. I still think her feelings are far more important than scrubbing a deck on a boat. Sister, when he goes back after running away, he won't be scrubbing no decks <laughs> on no boat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it seems to me that from this discussion, there are one or two issues which have been cleared up very definitely. May I sum them up for you? It's apparent that everyone on this jury has great sympathy for this couple, and we would be something less than human if we didn't have that sympathy. But it isn't the first time that lovers have been in distress when they found they had to be parted. Let's face the fact here. It would be the easiest thing in the world to permit our sympathies in this case to becloud our judgment and to therefore say with our hearts, children, run away and be happy. But would they be happy? Happy in running away from a serious obligation just because it's the easiest thing to do? You know, and he knows, and his wife knows, that the sooner he obeys the law and writes himself with the government, the sooner he'll be able to return to his wife and his child to give his affection and devotion, not for a few months, but for a whole lifetime. Members of the jury, I think you have reached these conclusions. First, let him obey the law and return to his post before he involves himself further. Second, when he has fulfilled his obligation, let him go back to her to live a frank and open life, not one of a fugitive. What in this life are the sources of happiness? A healthy body, economic independence, a lovely family? Yes, all of these. But there is one thing more to which nothing in life can compare. Without it, there can be no days of joy, no nights of rest. Would you bring happiness members of the jury to this poor couple? Then let him go back that they may enjoy life's most precious gift, peace of mind. And thus, A.L. Alexander and his jury sum up the case of Lucy and Dick. But what do you think they should do? What did they actually do in their true life story? Read the story of Lucy and Dick, titled For Love of Me, in January True Story magazine, and thrill to the brave struggle these two young people made to find lasting happiness. After you've read this story, sit down and write us your opinion. Give us your advice. And for the best letter containing the most helpful advice, True Story magazine will award a cash prize of $50. And that's not all. For each of ten other letters, which in the judge's opinion are next best, True Story will give prizes of $5. That makes 11 chances to win a cash prize. Remember, letters will be judged solely on the basis of helpfulness, and the opinion of the judges is final. Send your letter to A.L. Alexander in care of True Story Court, 205 East 42nd Street, New York City. 205 East 42nd Street, New York City. Winners will be announced two weeks from tonight. Miss Margaret Fox of 1726 Chapman Avenue, East Cleveland, Ohio, wins the first prize of $50 offered two weeks ago. Congratulations. And congratulations, too, to the Standard Drug Company, 14743 Euclid Avenue, East Cleveland, Ohio, who sold Miss Fox her copy of True Story. They win a prize of $25. On page 19 of your January True Story magazine is the gripping, heart-touching experience of a man who has suffered all that the world can bring in agony and ecstasy. Read this thrilling true-life story called But for This Woman in the January issue. Has it ever occurred to you why more than 100,000 magazine dealers carry True Story on their stands? It's because they know that over 2,200,000 families demand True Story's vivid, fascinating, helpful articles and stories every month. Because they know that millions of readers like the intimate, candid camera illustrations in True Story's pages. It's because they know that people everywhere want to read a magazine which gives them the true life stories of people just like themselves and their neighbors and friends. And that's why True Story is one of the most popular magazines and is the largest seller on the magazine stands of the world. True Story is a magazine you can't afford to miss. Go to your magazine dealer now and say a copy of the January True Story, please. And remember, True Story is not only great entertainment, but a guide to personal happiness as well. This is Nelson Case bidding you good night and good reading with your True Story magazine. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Well...